I, I kind of liken her coming over to AEW a bit like Moxley joining. In WWE, still very highly rated up there, but like of his contingent, i.e. the Shield, like the least rated amongst, you know, all of them. And he's come over to AEW and seemingly like, yeah, this is home. I'm, I'm not, I'm never going back there. There's no, mm-hmm. nothing that can kind of make me go back there. And I know obviously right now we are talking literally one week into Mercedes debuting, but I kind of get that similar kind of vibe. Like, you know, she, she Absolutely. is going to be marquee for them. Um, you know, she is the biggest signing the women's division made and probably like one of the biggest free agents that could possibly ever move between these two companies uh, you know at this scale like i it's very early and i don't want to jump the gun and i completely agree with you that you know she's got friends back in wwe and all of that kind of stuff but in the same light i see a life where if they treat her right as we would like to think they should she never goes back i agree like she stays i'm glad you said that you know not me so because you know um but yeah no i completely agree um I completely agree. And like, I have my Def Jitsu shirt right on right now. I'm a John Moxley <laughs> lifer. Um, he's one of my like true, like favorite wrestlers, inspirations. Yeah, I get I those vibes from her too. She's the only, you have to think she's the only person other than John Moxley who at the prime of their career said, you know what, I'm gonna go do this other thing. Obviously, this past week, we had AEW Big Business. Massive, massive news when we saw the the long-awaited debut of Mercedes Monet in AEW. Um, I remember watching, I didn't watch it live, but I watched it, uh, I think, a day later, your um, Body Slam um, review. <laughs> I know you said that, you know, just even the following segments, you just like couldn't really concentrate. What what was your the feelings? Talk to me about your emotions when you know it's finally happened. Mercedes walked through that curtain. Um, it just felt surreal, but it also felt right. Um Mercedes is so important to me personally. Um, when she I remember her NXT days really kept me into wrestling got me really back involved in wrestling in high school and she's been somebody that has always been like a real linchpin for me um as throughout my experiences as a wrestling fan um which i've been for over 17 years now and so i'm just so proud of her and i think like as a black woman specifically what she signif- she signifies for the industry going forward about what we can demand, um, what we can expect, um, being treated not only as a star but the star. Um, it was just, it was a beautiful moment. Um, I got so emotional, and I'm just so excited to see what she accomplishes because I know that whatever her next steps are, they're going to be fantastic. Just like you said, for me, that that is my story. Into, I would say being so invested in women's wrestling I'm, I'm probably a lot more invested in women's wrestling than a lot of maybe males and male fans in general because of that period of Mercedes coming in her and Bailey what they've done in NXT um you know really kind of showing them beyond this whole diva stuff and um yeah f- that that's my kind of allegiance to her as well um, so it's good to kind of see is where you know we're starting on that kind of same page you said that it feels right she's in AEW. So I know, obviously, um, from following you online that you're you're not so keen on WWE's products, which is fine. But why would you say, say the time is right um, for her to come back in? And why is AEW the better choice for Mercedes Monet, in your opinion? So there's multiple reasons. Um, I think that Mercedes, her biggest selling point has always been her as a wrestler she is a wrestler's wrestler her matches her quality like she is a wrestler wrestler and i think that the current wwe product and just even in the past is not as focused on wrestling as much from my personal taste of on the in-ring components of if you look at the way that tv matches are structured like you know if you look at like you know the amount of time um, that 
that, you know, in-ring wrestling gets, uh, um, it's a lot more promo focus, which is absolutely fine. Um, but for my taste, personally, I'm a big in-ring person, and I know that that is Mercedes's thing as well. And right now, AEW, for wrestlers, wrestlers, like, that is the place to be. Like, I, I truly believe that that roster has the best pro wrestlers, women's and men's, on the roster right now. It, the in-ring is so much more focused on, and I think that this is an opportunity for Mercedes to really showcase what she can do, not just on pay-per-views, but on TV matches. Like, there's such a much higher caliber bar um, for the in-ring wrestling. And also, I think that AEW allows for a lot more flexibility as far as partnership, right? Like, she has dreams of wrestling luchadoras that can happen because of, you know, relationships with CMLL. She has, you know, obviously invested in New Japan and Stardom, which AEW now has relationships with both of those companies. Um, it's not, you know, if she wants to wrestle Stephanie Bakir tomorrow, she can be flewed out, you know, for, for Dynamite. If she wants to wrestle um, Mina Shirakawa from Stardom, that can be arranged pretty easily. And also, I think that the roster of current women on the AEW roster, people who she hasn't gotten into the ring with, um, some who I believe are truly some of the best absolute wrestlers in the world, people like Jamie Hayter, um, people like Athena, who she didn't get to even wrestle while she was in WWE. And I think Athena right now is the best women's wrestler in the world. And so Mercedes being one of the greatest of all time, I think for me, that's a dream match. Um, I, I think of, you know, there's so many other women, you know, even younger women, Queen Aminata, Mariah May, like real hoopers, like, you know, Willow Nightingale is a great rematch, Riho, the first AEW Women's Champion. There's just so much more, I feel like, for her to do. Like, you know, like, I feel like she did it all in WWE. Like, we saw her do literally any everything. We saw her wrestle just about everybody. There's just so much newness, and I'm all about freshness. She has this new character now. She gets to be herself. So I'm all about doing things fresh and new. And like she said, she wants to lead a global revolution. And with all the different partnerships that AEW has, there's no better place to do that than um, in all elite wrestling for her. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think um, she's an important fixture for them at, at this time. You mentioned, obviously, wrestling being at the, the focus of it all. And um, there isn't a better place right now on the globe than AEW if you're talking about just, you know, between the ropes. We're going to come back to this global revolution thing that you mentioned, because I think it's a very important reason of, to, of her joining AEW. On a side note, you mentioned, obviously, she went to Japan. We saw in Japan early last year. And she won gold over there. She brought a lot of eyes to the products um, in, in New Japan products for people that maybe just weren't tuned in and stuff like that. I've got a thing, yeah, where I feel like they, you know, she got injured. She was on the shelf for the rest of the year, unfortunately. And I think from there on out, New Japan failed her failed maybe the work that she had put in for that woman's division and the eyes that she was bringing over there i think it went very quiet it's like it was mercedes or bust sort of thing they weren't ready to kind of invest in anyone else and you know the iwgp women's title that they created Kyrie held mercedes held and then you know it wasn't even on wrestle kingdom this past year it was a big big disappointment to me what what's your thoughts on on that and you know what they can do with that IWGP title, you know, away from Mercedes? And should they have maybe, they over, did you think they over-focused it on Mercedes after what we saw the rest of the year? Um, I think in a lot of ways, yes, but some ways, no. I think that there was a lot of power struggles behind the scenes between Bushi Road, um, who owns both um, New Japan and Stardom. And I think there was a lot of miscommunication there. I think that Stardom already had a big, how do I say it? Like they already have their own belt to book. And then they now have this extra belt that they really didn't know what to do with. And I think like the new Japan strong title, um, which I actually do think that that was the better booked belt out, um, out of efficiency um, ended up going from um, obviously from Willow to Julia and now to Stephanie Becker. Um, But the IWGP uh, women's championship actually went 
about, I think, four to five months without being defended at all. Yeah. Now, I do think that now we're starting to see it's starting to balance out. Like it's starting to be what the belt was originally supposed to be. Um, they got Mayu Otani over to the U.S. eventually. She defended against Stephanie the Care. She's defended against some great women. She now has um, a huge defense coming up against Sari, who is probably the biggest freelance name in Japanese wrestling right now. One of the biggest names, I would say, in women's wrestling right now. Um, so I think it's starting to balance out because there was just so many, like, there was a lot going on as far as like management shifts, as we've seen with Bushi Road, as we've seen with New Japan, like they've seen like presidents get overhauled. We've seen bookers get overhauled. So I think it's starting to definitely balance out now. I think that they've really kind of like focused in on what they want to do. Um, and but at the time, that just wasn't the case. And so what they did this year with Wrestle Kingdom was they kept it separate. You know, Stardom had a show right before at Tokyo Dome City Hall, which I was present for. And then um, they had the um, Wrestle Kingdom show directly afterwards. And so I think they felt like they didn't have like a big enough match to like be able to like put the women's um, the women's match on the men's show. But I do yeah. think that there's a lot of work to be done to make sure like to inform the new japan audience on like who some of these women are i think um uh, like it seems like they're trying it again because you know um recently on new beginning in sapporo um mina shirakawa actually challenged mayu otani for the iwgp women's championship and um the crowd didn't know who these women were at first and so you can see that they were quiet at first but eventually they got them into the match um, so I think that what they could do is possibly like do some preview tags before, like, you know, better video packages. I'm not sure, but um, I think that they can do a better job of like, you know, informing their audience of who, who these women are. But based off of what I'm seeing now about these relationships, um, I do think that, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to see like some change there on that front. So that's exciting. But I do think that they were um, overly invested in person. Mercedes are best. Um, but there was a lot of other things going on too. So I do think that that will change. Yeah. Other factors. Yeah. Well, like you said, you know, she, she's got aspirations of, you know, she said it unfinished business over there, maybe, you know, starting business in Mexico. So, um, yeah, hopefully we, we kind of get back to this. You mentioned, um, wrestling obviously being, um, at the forefront of your personal taste. And that's why she should go to AEW. That's why she, you have, she's chosen AEW. How else can AEW cater to Mercedes? Um, honestly, I think that, I think that Mercedes, I, I think that wrestling is the big thing. And I don't think that has ever been catered to for Mercedes of for her to have that creative control. I think owning her intellectual property, her name, image, likeness, I think was a huge selling point for her. Um, I think that, you know, being able to like, you know, own her music, own her look, own, own essentially her trademarks. Like, I think that name image and likeness is a huge selling point for wrestlers um and um especially for women who are building a brand an independent brand i think that aew allows her to do that which is already like you know a huge thing i think like wrestling of so for somebody like her like she says global revolution she wants to wrestle people from all over the world the flexibility um, is there. They allow for that, this new roster. And also she's allowed to lead, you know? I don't think she ever really got that opportunity in WWE. I like to believe like in WWE, she made herself a star in spite of herself, but she was never the one that WWE pushed. It was either, you know, Charlotte or Becky who are all, you know, incredible in their own right. But Mercedes was putting on these classic matches, these matches that influenced a whole generation of fans and wrestlers. And she never got, you know, that proper credit. And um, I think that AEW is all in on her of saying, like, you are our face. You are the face of our division. You are our star. And I think that, you know, that that's something that she's been needing for a while. Yes, they're all in on her of making her the focal point, the face of the division, like, you know, and one of their top stars. And 
she's proven that she's a draw. She's proven all these things. And so, and also she's 31 years old. Like, you know, like she doesn't really have time to waste as far as think maybe a company taking a chance on her, you know, like maybe like, you know, like it's, she's at a very, I think, crucial point in her career of like, you know, she's proven what she can do. So, you know, you need somebody who's ready to give her the ball and clearly AEW is so. Yeah, they've they've definitely given her the ball. They're paying her the big bucks reportedly. Um, like you said, the creative stuff. They've even allowed her. You know, there was the whole thing about Jennifer Pepperman, the ex writer from um, WWE, coming in, and she's even got a, a bigger role in AEW now as like an overhaul of um, the creative process over there. And they're giving her all these things to to be the success. I have always thought, and I think many fans always thought as well, when Soraya came in, she came with like the energy of I'm going to be the change, almost like the, the savior that we kind of looked towards as fans. Like, you know, right, Soraya's in, relatively big name, and, you know, we're going to improve a lot of the booking and presentation of the women's division. Didn't quite work out that way for whatever reason with Soraya. We have Mercedes Monet now, who undoubtedly is coming like we said to make this global revolution and it's now she's kind of wearing the savior cape and hat and you know can can she do it for aew and on a wider scale women's wrestling so do you see or what do you see being different about the women's divisions presentation um off the back of mercedes arrival um i think it's already different um and i think that I would say, like, when Soraya came, I wasn't really expecting anything. And the reason is because, like, Soraya is, we didn't even know she could wrestle. Like, you know, like, when she first debuted back, like, we didn't know if, like, she was, you know, physically cleared or anything to wrestle. And I think also, like, the thing about Soraya is, yes, I do believe that in WWE, that women's revolution started with the match that her and Emma had. Um, at uh, Paige and Emma at NXT Arrival. But it opened the door, but it wasn't like, in my opinion, like she was the person really leading the change of having like those memorable matches or anything. That really came with the whole Four Horsewomen. So I wasn't really expecting her to be like this transformational face of the division. Because if we look back at that time, Though it was the homegrown stars like Jamie Hayter who were, you know, making the arenas pop, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. And I feel like what I think is so different about this time is that it's not all on Mercedes. You know, there's been a clear emphasis on the women's division before she came in. We've seen more women's matches, you know, on collision. We've seen more time, more stories, like every single between Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage all have their own women's storylines. And that was before Mercedes debuted. We were seeing more women featured on television. And I think also Mercedes' words are so powerful in the interviews that she's done since debut in AEW and even the opening promo. She never did that. Oh, I'm here to save the division. I'm not here to save, you know, be the face of this division. She said that I have been watching and the women in that locker room are so talented that I want it to be a part of them. Like she is coming in as a team player. Let's work together. And I think that that is the energy that's going to elevate this division to higher heights because no one person can do it alone. And yes, is Mercedes obviously going to bring more eyes to the product? Absolutely. Is she going to bring more eyes to this division? Absolutely. Is she going to elevate the division to higher heights? Absolutely. But she's coming in with the, you know, the thought process of, I can't do this alone. Like I, you know, these women who are already here, who have been doing the work are so talented. And I think that honestly, you know, one of the true inspirations of the division is if you look over to Ring of Honor with um, Athena did with Billy Starks um, and that long-term beautiful story that they told and they've been telling and continue to tell um, and the history that she's been making over there and history, like, you know, that Willow Nightingale was making and, um, I think that's the difference. I think that's what we're going to continue to see more of is just more women being showcased. Um, and because of Mercedes, it's going to get to a whole different audience. 
Yeah. I think, like I said, mention Soraya, I think that's de- it was definitely a, a fan thing. Like you rightly said, she, when she came into AEW, it wasn't even confirmed that she could wrestle at the time. Yeah. So I think his fans just literally saw, like, right, this is a, a big name and, you know, probably going to hinge our hopes on improvement on her. And like you said, Mercedes hasn't said that, yeah, I'm coming in to be the face and all of this kind of stuff. Again, fans seeing a big name and thinking, right, we're going to get further improvements with the likes of Mercedes um, coming in. So for sure, I think it's a thing of, you know, hoping. But rightly, again, we have had improvements in this division. Um, I think it's just, I guess it's the consistency that people are, are looking for. Um, and hoping that, you know, Mercedes can can help to bring the women, get more segments, getting more matches, longer matches, more and better stories um, being told as well. Um, interviews. We had this interview from the Kick Rocks on the Kick Rocks podcast before this debut, about a week or so before, and I clicked up a bit of it saying that, you know, I don't. I personally don't think it was. It's a big deal, but it was said in an interview that she'll be back there some way, someday, insinuating a return to WWE. I think it's a bit of a just a regular flippant comment that wrestlers say that you know never say never kind of thing. But of course, the timing was horrible, seen as she yeah, was to was debut horrible. in AEW. Um, yeah, what did you think of it when that came out? I don't think that part was actually supposed to air, honestly, because it was edited out of the main yeah. interview, but it was in that side clip. So, and I hadn't seen her. And because she hasn't like reamplified it again, I think, I don't think it was supposed to go out. I don't mm. think that that part was, I think that was supposed to be edited out. But even so, like Will Ospreay in his last match in New Japan was flat out saying, like, you know, I will be back to one day. Yeah. Okada, you know, is one of those people of just, like, you know, never say never. So, I'm going to be honest. She will be back one day. Now, I do, I believe that she's going to be on a full run. Maybe not. I don't, I don't, I highly doubt we see her back as a full-time, like, long-term performer in WWE again. Um, but, think about it. One thing, she's going to go in the Hall of Fame. And if she doesn't, that's this is gonna be a riot. Of course. So and that's one. And then two, like Bailey's there, you know, like you know, like her best friends are there. So even if it's like, you know, I, I, I could easily see, you know, Bailey's retirement match, you know, she wants Mercedes to be her final opponent. Like, you know, like when she says unfinished business, I think like people need to like think of just her best, her two best friends are there. Like, you know, of course, like, you know, like, and I don't think that, you know, like, and Bailey and all of them are older than her. So, you know, like, hey, she's going to want to be around for like, you know, different things. So I personally don't, obviously the timing was terrible. And like I said, I don't think that that part was probably ever supposed to like go out. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it is what it is. People want to say what they want to say, but I, I truly believe that she's so focused on this era of her career and um, I'm excited for her. Like, you know, like at the end of the day and if, and I recently, I actually listened to the podcast yesterday that her advocate um, put out and was just saying of just, um, she had a, you know, a good offer from WWE, but her heart told her, you know, to go with AEW just because more was offered and not, and it wasn't just money. It was, you know, creative and it was just like and she and hit her advocate flat out said that she's finally in a place where she's not just tolerated she's truly celebrated and they see her for the star that she is so i you know i don't pay too much in that like you know all wrestlers say you know never say never which they should like you know you never know what's gonna happen yeah. and i do like i said even at the very least we definitely see her back one day because she is a future Hall of Famer and she 100% deserves to go in that Hall of Fame. So that's what I think personally. I I, I think that she, I, I kind of liken her coming over to AEW a bit like Moxley joining. In WWE, still very highly rated up there, but like of his contingent, i.e. the Shield, like the least rated amongst you know all of them and he's come over to AEW seemingly like yeah this is home i'm i'm not i'm never going back there there's no mm-hmm. nothing that can kind of make me go back there and i know obviously right now we are talking literally one week into mercedes debuting 
but I kind of get that similar kind of vibe. Like, you know, she she Absolutely. is going to be marquee for them. Um, you know, she is the biggest signing the women's division made and probably like one of the biggest free agents that could possibly ever move between these two companies, uh, you know, at this scale. Like, I it's very early and I don't want to jump the gun. And I completely agree with you that, you know, she's got friends back in WWE and all of that kind of stuff. But in the same light, I see a life where, if they treat her right as we would like to think they should, she never goes back. If I agree. Her the face, like she stays. I'm glad you said that. You know, not me, son, because you know. Cause, um, but yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I completely agree. And like, I have my Def Jitsu shirt right on right now. I'm a John Moxley <laughs> lifer. Um, he's one of my like true like favorite wrestlers, inspirations. Yeah, I get I those vibes from her too. She's the only. You have to think she's the only person other than John Moxley who at the prime of their career said, you know what, I'm going to go do this other thing. And like, you know, who had already been like, you know, in WWE, who flat out says like, you know, I'm going to go do this other thing. And I think, like, as you said, I think if they treat her right, I think she's going to be a lifer. Like Mercedes is a leader. She's a trendsetter. And honestly, I just, from watching her, even like if you, I, I forgot if it was a WWE Chronicle episode or something, but to, especially that WWE had did on her and she talked about when she originally had left and when she returned as like you know the blueprint she talked about how she had been like she hadn't even heard her own name for months and years at the point to where all she knew was Sasha Banks she didn't even hadn't even heard the word Mercedes in so long and to where didn't even know her own her own hair looked like under that blue wig and and stuff like that and I think People, people really underestimate how that can mess with a person, like, you know, of just not being able to be you yourself. I really don't see a future where she goes back to being Sasha Banks. Like, and I'm going to be honest, like, I, and I'm almost positive that was a part of the negotiation of her saying, like, I don't want to be Sasha Banks anymore. Like, yeah, you know, uh, if I come back, like, I'm going to come back, you know, like, WWE typically doesn't go for that. Um and so and I, I think like she's just matured um, in so many ways and blossomed. I don't foresee her going backwards. You know, I don't foresee her going backwards. It's always forward. And that's one thing that Mercedes has always been about newness going forward. Um, and like I said, you know, I see two of my, two of my all time favorite wrestlers are her and John Moxley. And I see so many parallels between the two of them. And so I true, I, I also believe like, I don't foresee her ever going back Unless, like, you know, it's truly, like, her Hall of Fame ceremony. Same thing with Mox, right? Until, like, the she and even Seth Rollins has flat out said it. He said, don't ever think you, you're probably never going to see us back together again unless it's at the Shield being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, and I got those similar vibes because I don't think people can say whatever they want about Tony Khan, but he has a lot of money and he's not scared to use it. And he's all in on her. Like, he's clearly all in on her. And it's so refreshing to see, like, not just from AEW, from it, but for any wrestling company to, like, put this much effort into a woman, let alone a black woman. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, it, it is. Like, I compare it to, obviously, you know, we saw what CM Punk got when he made his first um, debut. And to get this kind of treatment, it's special because women's wrestling tends to be an afterthought in the in the world of wrestling and all of a sudden we're naming you know shows after after her we're giving the hints the innuendos we're renting mercedes maybachs you know to bring her into the arena like it's it's crazy and you know mercedes has been one to kind of say her opinion when she's not impressed you know, that's really one of the core reasons she left in the first place um, because of the treatment in the women's tag division. Um, I'm almost praying to God we don't find ourselves in a position where, yeah, she's ever being underutilized or the division is not doing what, you know, they plan for it. And AEW don't need the bad press in terms of being outed that this isn't happening as promised or whatever the case is. So, um, like you said, you know, forward ever, backwards never. We hope that, you know, this is just the start of something brilliant and um, it kind of, you know, raises all tides in AEW, especially in that women's division. Before we get out of here, three 
programs you're looking forward to with Mercedes? Not particularly so much the match, but just three of the programs, depending on the characters on the show, um, that you want to see happen? Um, Athena, number one. Um, I think that's... Um, I, I tweeted about this, but like Athena's upcoming match with Sheeta, in my opinion, is the first time amongst the women that we've seen like a clash of the Titan style type yeah. matchup, like that S tier versus S tier competitor type matchup. We've seen it with the men, Osprey Omega, Omega Danielson, Omega, Osprey Danielson, like so many things, but we haven't really seen that with the men yet. And so, about with the women yet. And so, I think Athena versus Mercedes, I, in my opinion, the two best American women wrestlers in the world, um, power and them being black women, I think it's just that. Again, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, obviously, Jamie Hayter, um, yes. I think, because truly Jamie is what changed it all, I think, for the women's division of that first person where I feel like the fans were 100% all in on her, all behind her. And we saw the division picking up steam in her title reign and, and when she got injured, it kind of like, you know, kind of fell by the wayside. And so, mm-hmm. I think that that is going to be powerful. Her return turn pop is going to be awesome. And I think also the thing is she's also one of those S tier wrestlers too. So uh, when I always say true aura really lies at the intersection of talent and presentation. And so I think you have them both being just about equally as popular and equally as talented. Incredible. Um, and who's the third one? Um, there's so many women. Um, I honestly think Willow, and I think it's Willow, and I think that I think that obviously they're going to start off with this program, but I think it's going to be something that they revisit a long time and long time. And I remember when they originally, when the match, when the one night tournament was announced for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship, I wrote a preview article, and I said that I think that Mercedes and Willow have they have the opportunity to almost recreate the magic of Say Sasha, Bailey, you know, in the, the NXT days, because when Mercedes is the mega heel and Willow is like this perfect baby face. And I think that they can truly like, you know, with everybody healthy, everybody firing off on all cylinders, like, they can really create like a generational type feud, like a genu- generational type feud, like a, and really getting they back. Like I'm talking about getting they back. I agree. Uh, really creative, and I I think that they can do something special. And I think that this is that's that generational baby face that I think wrestling hasn't really had since NXT Bailey. You know, I think. When I first saw Willow, I said, oh, she has that type of energy that we saw back in 2015. Like, you know, um, or a little bit more mature, but it's still that same type of pure, beautiful, like, you know, just positive energy, but with, you know, like this power in the ring. So, yeah, those are my three. Athena, Hater, Willow, I think I would be amazing programs for Mercedes, but that's not even counting like, you know, the stuff outside of like AEW, like, you know, there's so many now possibilities, like, you know, who knows, like maybe she'll bring in a heater. Maybe she'll have like, you know, some muscle, maybe she'll start her own faction. I remember she talked about like, you know, possibly working with the renegade twins, which I think would be fantastic. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Oh, um, I think it would be perfect. Um, you know, Hopefully we get the first women's blood and guts soon. Um, maybe she joins a men's faction. You know, I think that she could be hilarious in the elite right now. I don't know. With her That's what I her, thought. Yeah. Money makers. I, I just there's so the. I I think that you know a lot of people feel some types of way, but I feel like when it comes to AEW and Mercedes. I get so excited because everything is new, you know, we're not recycling any storylines or not, you know, getting, we're not just plugging her in, you know, everything is new. Everything is fresh. Everything's on the table. So I'm excited.